fellow diamond painting addicts and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. I'm Daphne and I'm here today for this week's Whip and Chat. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Whip, W-I-P, stands for work in progress and this is mine. You are welcome and encouraged to go grab whatever you are working on and work alongside while I chat. Or alternatively, you can treat this as a podcast and just listen while I chat. Today, I am going to be working on my Jasper C. I know that many of you said that it would be fine if I worked with my J wall and I will be doing that. I am still working on it, but logistically I've got to work some things out because there's no way that it fits on my filming table and the way things that are configured. Yeah, I just have to figure something else out. I've got to set up a different filming space if I'm going to use that one. So, so for today, I'm going to be working on my Jasper C going to be laying down the first drills so that I can get started. I'm super excited to be working on this one. I have loved this kit for a long time. I've got all kinds of ABs that I'm going to be adding into it. So yeah, I'm just going to jump in. I'm going to move things around a bit, zoom into where I'm going to be working, and I'll be right back. All right, I've got some drills poured out. Let me start my timer. All right, I've got my timer started here. Now I'm going to be starting with 939, but I told you guys that I have a B's of some of these very dark colors that I don't normally use because 939 is a very, very dark blue, almost black. And you can see the a B's, it's kind of a yellow, purple, blue looking a B, but because this is supposed to be sort of like wet acrylic paint, I decided that I was gonna go ahead and use the a B's in this particular kit and just see how it turns out because I think it will add to making it look like that wet paint pour rather than just being the kind of shadows that you normally want your dark colors to fade into. It may not work, I may not like it, but I think it will be fine. It just will add another dimension of color to it is what I'm expecting. Okay, so enough about the kit. Let me jump into my real life stuff. What is going on in my real life? Again, this week, a lot of same old, same old, but that's okay, right? Life can't always be exciting. Not that there haven't been some interesting things going on, just that not every week can be action packed, jam filled with stuff, right? So just some boring things, what's going on. <laughs> my husband's Oriole is back. I don't know if you guys remember, I think it was last summer. M my husband has, it's an Oriole, which I didn't even really know until this happened that we had Orioles here in Kansas. I, I thought they were birds that lived in other states. So, but apparently we do have them here. And one of them has fallen in love with my husband's car. <laughs> When my husband is home on the weekends, because where he works during the week, it's dusty and he drives a lot of back roads. He works out by some feed lots. They're out in very, very rural Kansas putting new utility lines in. And so when he comes home on the weekends, he washes his car. <laughs> and without fail, after he has washed his car, this Oriole shows up and it sits on his side mirror and it will hop down from the top of the mirror to, I assume, looking at itself in the mirror. And I told my husband, I said, I think he's lonely. Either he's lonely or he's admiring himself in the mirror, one of those two. And since I didn't know if we had any Orioles, though my husband has said he's seen one that's not as brightly colored, but near this one. So I don't know if there's a female because females of bird species tend to be, their colors are more dull than the male counterparts. So I don't know if there's a female Oriole and he thinks this is another male Oriole hoarding in on his territory. I don't know if he just likes looking at himself, but he's back and it's making my husband crazy because as soon as he sees himself in the mirror, he poops all over the car. So my husband's like, I just washed it. Now this stupid bird is out there. I just laugh. I'm like, I don't know. Just wait until before you leave to wash it then instead of washing it so early in the weekend. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't know why he washes it every weekend anyway. It's just going to get dirty again. He did discover, he drives by a lot of farms, of course, because of where he's at when he's working. And one of the farms that he drives by has goats. And he was driving the other day 
and he's talking to me on the phone and all of a sudden he starts laughing and I said what's going on and he's like I didn't know and I said no what and he said I drive by this farm every day to and from work and they have goats and I said yeah and he goes well something like a squirrel or something ran out in front of the road so he honked the horn so that the squirrel would run the other way and when he honked the horn it scared the goats they were fainting goats (laughs) so now he's like I'm gonna honk the horn every time I drive by and I'm like don't do that that's mean but it's hilarious they're fainting goats I didn't know they were fainting goats I'm like that's mean don't scare them I mean, I get it. They're cute and it is funny, but he was so, he was so tickled. I've never seen him. I didn't, he's only seen them on the internet, of course. Isn't that such a weird thing? I think it's almost kind of like going to the zoo where you're like, wow, seeing it in person somehow makes it different. Hubby was also supposed to meet with his financial advisors this week. However, that did not happen. They had something happen and they needed to reschedule. So it's going to be another couple of weeks before we find out if he can retire and what's going to happen, which I'm kind of annoyed with because I, we just, I need to know questions, have some questions answered that will affect our decisions. But I guess I'm just going to look at it as well. I guess that'll give us some extra time to get everything ready for the move. So I'm going to try not to be too upset about it, but yeah, I just want to know. So I'll keep working on getting the house packed up, sorted, all that kind of stuff. We are going to need to paint and do some of those things like I've said before. So once I get the house a little bit more sorted and we get some more things sold, hopefully, then we can get all of that done. All right. This one is an AB that actually came with the kit. So let's look at this. In other news, my youngest has been stressed all week. This week was the end of regular classes and finals are next week. So he was hurrying to get everything done. Just super stressed about everything. And some of it is he waits until the last minute to get some things done. And then of course he has questions and it's like, well, you've waited till the last minute. So I don't know if you're gonna get your questions answered before whatever it is due. But he somehow always manages to get everything finished. And hopefully, I haven't heard otherwise, once he passes his finals, then he'll be done. And that's what I kept reminding him every time he came to me with questions this week. Like, I know you're getting stressed, but you know the semester has gone okay. He's got decent grades in all of his classes, so just take a breath and recognize that you're gonna be done. You've got a couple more weeks of this stress. Yes, it is stressful, but then after that, you're finished. Little does he know that after that, I'm going to be roping him into helping me every day to sort and pack. And just because it's always easier to have somebody with big muscles helping you. He's had some big projects that he's had to finish up and everything. So I'm sure he'll be glad to be done. And hopefully all of the weather has finally settled down, at least enough for us to get back on our regular walking schedule. I hope anyway. We had so much rain and everything last week, we didn't even really walk. Uh, I think we walked one day last week, and then every other day it was really raining, so we didn't really do anything. That's probably part of it. We haven't gotten out of the house like we normally do, so. Uh, My daughter came over because she was trying to get some things done, and I was making some stickers and things for her for the people that she works with and I did find out that she got a job working summer school so she's going to be working this summer in addition to her regular income from her job because the way they set it up even though she doesn't work in the summer she gets paid so her pay gets split over 12 months they didn't used to do that they used to only do that for teachers but it just makes the accounting part of it and people insurance and all of that it just makes it easier if they they do that you used to get a choice even teachers used to get a choice of whether you wanted to get paid split over the whole year or if you wanted to just get paid the months that summer was in session because i know when i first started teaching there were some teachers who would pick to only get paid while school was in session i don't know why you would do that but Not my life. Who knows what their reasons were. But but anyway, these days, it's not really an option. So she gets a regular paycheck during the summer. But 
more money is always good and she got picked to got the job working summer school so she's going to be doing summer school which will be great makes makes my little mama's heart feel a little bit better that she's going to have some extra income coming in and she's been trying to save up because she knows we're going to be unavailable I mean she's still going to have my sister and brother for emergencies and things but that's not the same as having your mom to call right I mean she could still call me but we won't be able to just spend 15 minutes and drive over to her house and fix whatever the problem is that she's having and it's made me feel better she's been trying really hard to be better about saving and managing her money which has been a source of stress for me because up until now she's not been really good about that this color is another one that I've got an AB for. I'm just doing all ABs today. I'm liking it so far. Oh, my neighbor's dog is barking. Hopefully you guys can't hear it. I was telling my husband, he came home Thursday and the dog had literally, I was in the office doing printing and cutting and doing all kinds of things. And it barked, I think all day long. So what else is going on in my real life? Uh, oh, I realized earlier this week that hubby made it all the way through his six months of jury duty without actually getting called. So yay him. He had, I think he got notified, I think it was November of last year, that he basically would be on call for six months. So I kind of left the paperwork hanging up on a bulletin board in my office just so I'd be reminded every so often, oh yeah. But he never did get called, so... He made it through. I always find it interesting how that seems to go for some people. I've only ever been called for federal court and I didn't get chosen. So I was only there for a couple of days while they were doing their jury selection. But my son has been called twice already. He didn't have to serve either time because he was in school, but he's been picked twice and then hubby got picked. I'm like, it's really funny to me how some people never seem to get called and then other people seem to get called all the time. It was like that with my mom and dad too. My mom never got called and she would love to have done it. And my dad got called like four or five times. I think he, I don't think he, he might have served once, but I don't think, my dad worked on a lot of government contracts. He worked for an air, not an airline, an aircraft manufacturer. And he did a lot of government defense work. So I don't know if that had something to do with why he always got excused. I don't remember him actually ever serving any of the times that he got called. But I remember him getting called multiple times and my mom complaining. It's like, I never get called. How come you always... Just interesting how they, how they do that. Because it's supposed to be through your driver's license records, I think is what I remember. I wonder if that's the same in Canada. If they do it the same way in Canada, how do they, I don't know because their system is different because it's all through the crown and all of that. I don't know if it's a different, how they actually call people for jury duty is different or do they, do they always have a jury? I mean, we don't always have juries here either. Sometimes it's just a judge, but I've also been busy working on other behind the scenes projects. I did do a little bit of research because I was trying to see how this works for me to kind of move my YouTube channel and everything to Canada and how that works. I did do some research and it does appear that I can continue to do what I'm doing like I would do it here because like I've talked about here in the States, I only need my social security number to operate as a sole proprietorship so that I can get paid as a contractor by YouTube and Amazon and other things. You know, I don't have to register for a business license and all that kind of stuff. So it appears that's similar in Canada. But I think for me, I think I'm still going to have to operate under my U.S. Social Security number rather than my SIN in Canada because, because I'm a U.S. citizen and I still have to pay taxes in the U.S. because it's citizenship-based and not location-based like everybody else in the world that... I, it's they still want it reported so that stuff gets reported to the IRS under my social security number, which seems weird, but whatever. What I think does not matter when it comes to taxes. I think that's been made pretty clear by the government. But so I don't know about moving and all the things that I was worried about. I don't know if that's even going to matter, but I've also been working on 
getting things ready because I want to launch another YouTube channel for kind of my, our adventures as we undertake this big new change in our lives. It's going to be a channel <laughs> about a, a clueless American, that's me, in case that wasn't clear, uh, moving to Canada with her son and Canadian husband. Now, I don't know if my son and my husband will appear on the channel. It may just be me, but we'll see. So it'll be more real life focused because it'll be about us and our move and it will be about me living up there and the things that are different and, and adjusting and who knows what else will get thrown in. I'm hoping that it will still be fun and informative at the same time. And I'm not sure when that's actually gonna launch. I've got, like I said, more behind the scenes stuff to take care of before that happens, but I will certainly let all of you know when I do that. I would love to have you guys follow me over there as well so that I could focus on some things that interest me that aren't just diamond painting. I will still, the plan is to still be doing this channel as well, but who knows? Life has a funny way of changing your plans without notice, right? What's that quote? The best laid plans of mice and men. And hubby and I were having a conversation the other day. I, the more weeks that we continue to do this with his job, which is apparently how it's going to be for the foreseeable future. I thought maybe after a month or so or a couple of months that there would be some jobs opening up more locally. That is not happening. And I guess right now everybody is in the middle of contract negotiations, both contractors for the utility and direct employees of the utility. So I don't see that changing anytime soon. I think he's going to be where he is at least through the summer. So at least through our move and the longer we do this, I think it does a couple of things. It makes me kind of more anxious to get things done so that we can move because I'm tired of us spending so much time apart. I mean, yes, he's home on the weekends and I'm grateful for that, but we have so many things to do on the weekends, chores and other things that we have to get caught up on that we just, it just seems like we don't have very much time together and I don't like it. He doesn't like it. Yeah, it's just been a really good motivation for us to make it happen. And I did tell my husband the other day, I said, you know, we've, I said, we've been working towards this for so long. It has felt so far in the future and so far out of reach. And yet somehow we're still here. We, we need to go. If we don't go now, we're never going to. So it has been the, this job and him being gone has been good motivation for both of us to kind of, all right, let's figure this out so that we can get out of here. I mean, us waiting has made it, I think, hopefully will have made it a little bit easier. We're older. He's old enough that hopefully we'll be told that he can take out his retirement, perhaps fully retire that will make some of our decisions a little bit easier about what we're going to do when we get up there. It will give us some more capital to do things to get us up there. And hopefully both of those will be a good thing. So we still have to wait and see what they say, but, and then if they don't give us the answers we want, we know that we have to figure something else out and figure out how we're going to make it work. I mean, in theory, we could remain here for another year and a half before we absolutely need to move. But I told my husband, I, we just need to go. I mean, part of the reason for doing this was to get up there to be with his folks. His dad is doing well. He's in the nursing home that he's moved into and it, he's seems pretty stable. He's got good and bad days. His parents just had an anniversary and one day during the week, his mom said when they visited, she mentioned it to him. He knew exactly when it was, how many years it had been. Two days later, they went in and he knew they were married. Couldn't tell her the date of the anniversary and he had no idea how many years it had been. So yeah, I just, I, we need to get up there sooner rather than later.
Okay, I think that's everything I wanted to tell you guys about my real life. So let's get into my diamond painting life. So what's been going on in my diamond painting world? Last week, I had a giveaway for my 8,000 subscribers. Huge response to that. So thank you to everyone who watched, com commented, participated. That was fun. And then after all the fun, I really have buckled down. I told you guys last week, I moved my J wall onto my diamond painting table. That has been a huge help in kind of forcing me to work on it because that's what is on my work table. And so I've actually been working on it. Obviously I'm working on this one today, but I pretty much have been working on the J wall since my last whip and chat exclusively. I think it helps not only that I moved it to my diamond painting table, but also that I've not been trying to kind of split my time between other kits. I mean, I'm working on this one, like I said, but this one after today's whip and chat probably won't see much work done on it until either I decide to use it for next week's whip and chat or I feel like I need a break from the J wall. The J wall has actually been going pretty well. It's very confetti heavy. I posted a picture on my community tab on YouTube. So if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button so you see my community post as well. There was one section where I would swear it has 225 colors. I think 200 colors were in that one section. It felt like every single drill was I need one of this particular color. However, it did get balanced out by one of the next sections that I did, did actually have some multi-placing in it. Not a huge amount, J walls never do, but enough that it felt like it was a break from the constant confetti, so that was good. So it can be good to have multiple kits on the go, even though my brain doesn't always like it so that you just kind of give yourself that mental break. I think I'm going to do a video on doing a kit like that, that has a ton of confetti, because I think that's so intimidating to a lot of people. So leave me a comment down below and let me know if that's something you would be interested in seeing kind of how I approach a large painting like that. Not, not, my approach as a whole, because I've already done a video on that, but just my approach on how do I get organized and set up to work on a section like that, that has so much confetti and what are some tips for doing that? Because I think that there is a lot of satisfaction to be had in working on paintings like that. It is a bit more labor intensive than some other kits, but there is satisfaction in that as well. So yeah. Okay, so been working on it. I, I think I'm pretty much caught up to where I should have been at the end of February if I had stuck to my original work schedule with it. I think my original schedule, I said that I was, my plan was to do three sections a week and that would let me finish it by the end of April that plan went out the window. I got busy working on so many other things and just never picked up the J wall like I had assumed that I would. So I'm making up for lost time, certainly. So I'm happy about that. Like I said, I think I'm to where I would have been at the end of February, which means that I'm only three months behind. <laughs> and well, I guess at the end of February, maybe I'm only two months behind because my plan was to be done by the end of April. So March, April, so I'm only two months behind, not three. But I do think just looking at the canvas, I think I'm about at the halfway point. So that's making me feel good. I'm making progress even if I'm not finished. And I am determined, my new goal is to finish it before May, the end of May, because I want to finish it before DP for Pets starts because DP for Pets is going to be busy. I think June is going to be very busy for me. We've got two graduations coming up. We've got two birthdays coming up. Actually, we've got two more family birthdays in June. So all of that going on, I'll be busy with DP for Pets. 
yeah, just a lot of things going on in addition to trying to get ready for the move and all of that good stuff. Getting the house on the market, just, yeah, lots of stuff. I need to look back and see how did I do in the month of April? So I thought I would take this whip and chat to also share with you guys how April went. So for my diamond painting goals, my first goal, of course, is my diamond painting hours. How many hours did I get in in April? For the month of April, I got in 99 hours and 46 minutes, which I'm actually feeling pretty good about. That's over, I think I needed 80 some hours a month to meet my goal for the end of the year. So I'm feeling good about that. So if you add my 99 hours and 46 minutes to my previous total for the year, which was 170, 172 hours and 19 minutes, that means I am currently setting at 272 hours and five minutes for the year which is not anywhere near the halfway point, but that's okay. I have a couple more months to add some hours in. And if I can finish, manage to finish the J wall, that should be a good chunk of them. So how many things did I finish? Because number of finishes was also a goal. This year, my goal is only to finish 35 things because I am working on such large canvases like the J wall and some of my other kits have been fairly large. I think my smallest kit this year has been a 40 by 50. No, that's wrong. I finished that little butterfly kit, which was like a 30 by 40. But other than that, all of my kits have been fairly large. So I finished three things in April. I finished my universe in a jar, which was one of my five oldest kits. I finished my foxy love, which was from Pam Diamond Painting. And I finished my lady luck which was my Dreamer Designs and was the kit from my, well, that's the next goal, so I'll talk about that. So three finishes. So if I add that to my previous seven finishes, I am now at 10 finishes for the year so far, which again, I'm feeling pretty good about. I think, I think I'm gonna meet my 35 goal. Just getting the J wall done will be a huge thing. So I think I'm on track for that. My next goal was my want series. And that's what I started to say with my Lady Luck. Lady Luck was one of the kits from my want series. My goal was to do one of those every month. I didn't manage that in March because I was working on the two Spanglers, but I did do one for April. So if I add that to the two previous, I'm sitting at three for that. So I'm a month behind, but hopefully one of these months after the J wall is completed, and that huge project is off my plate, then maybe there'll be a month where I can do two from the want series. It's always a moving target, right? If the goal isn't working for me, then I can change it and adapt it. I'm gonna leave it where it is for now though. You guys, I gotta say, I'm really loving all these ABs so far. I'm pretty happy with all this. All right, this next color is not an AB, but that's okay. So back to my diamond painting goals. The next one was my budget. How did I do with my budget? Surprisingly, in the month of April, I only spent $94.33, and that was on some tools. I, if you saw yesterday's video, that was those tools. I got two trays and a pen. So $94.33 for the month of April, which was under my $150 budget, but I've gone over budget on other months. So my of my $2,400 for the year budget, I have $1635.58 left which means I'm still slightly into May's budget, but that's okay. I am I should now be caught up enough that there's a little bit of May's budget left. So if I want to buy anything else, I've got some room to play with there. All right, then my next goal was my five oldest kits. And Jasper C is actually my second oldest kit. My Bubble Fairies was my first oldest. And then I finished Universe in a Jar, which was actually my third oldest. So I probably should have done this one before that one, but that's okay. I'm working on this one now. So I have, I finished Universe in a Jar and I had already finished Bubble Fairy. So I have one done for April, add that to the one that I had done previously in March. That means I'm sitting at two of my five oldest. And I actually am working on two of the other ones. So I think I'm well on my way to finishing that goal for the year. Then my last goal is increasing my stash. 
as many of you know, because we are moving to Canada, my goal was to increase my stash because things will be more expensive moving up there. Shipping is more expensive because a lot of diamond painting companies are in the United States, so shipping is less expensive while I'm here in the States, so I wanna take advantage of that. However, I didn't increase my stash this month. I didn't buy any kits this month, and I finished three things. So I finished three things, which takes me minus three for my stash, and I bought nothing new, which means I add zero to that, which means I am negative three in my stash count, which means I'm not making that goal. Now, I've kind of gone back and forth about what I wanna do. I'm probably gonna continue to go back and forth until we finally are actually ready to pack up and move, and I've just got what I've got, and we're doing what we're doing. Currently, I am sitting at, yes, I do want to increase my stash while we're working on other things and kind of until we know what our financial situation is going to be. I feel like it would be smart to get them now and then if for some reason our financial situation is more strained than I'm expecting it to be, I will be okay if I don't buy some diamond paintings for a while. I mean, I would be fine right now. I've got more diamond paintings than I could finish in a year, obviously, but there's always new cute stuff coming out, right? And who's to say that there might be some kits that I'm not gonna change my mind about? For example, the Victorian Mansion kit that was my last stay or go video. I did decide not to keep that one. Lots of good arguments for you guys, from you guys, about why to keep it, but also why to let it go. But for me personally, it was just too much of a gamble and not one that I wanted to take for that particular painting. I heard lots of good and bad things about square drills. It happened to be an older kit, so I felt like it was going to kind of be a little bit of a crapshoot to see what the drills were like. Yes, I had other options to use my spares, that kind of thing. But ultimately, it just wasn't a painting that I was in love with. It was very pretty. I will not argue that. It was a nice painting. I'm not arguing that. I'm just saying that for me personally, it was not a painting that I was in love with. And I felt like somebody else would get much more enjoyment out of it than I would. And that would free up some space for me to fill that slot in my stash with something that I would love even more. So that's what I did. I'm not going to keep that one. And that frees up that slot. Now, having said that, because I'm at negative three for my stash, I'm kind of looking at, well, I would like to buy some additional paintings. And not to sound like someone who was spoiled or whatever, but just we all have our own particular tastes and everything. And just a lot of the things that are new releases that I've been seeing from kind of my regular go-to companies are just not really things that I'm interested in. I mean, I've seen some paintings that are cute. I've seen some that are very pretty, but just nothing that made me think, oh, that's gorgeous. I must have that one so that I can work on it. Now, I will admit, I am also have only been looking at in-stock kits because I don't want to get stuck waiting three or four months on pre-order kits because we don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know for sure what our schedule is going to be. I don't wanna order something and then when it finally gets here, we're gone. So I don't know if that has had an impact on why I've not been able to find as many kits that I want to get. But I'm also realizing I kind of go to all my usual haunts and so I thought, well, I should ask you guys. So what I would like you to do, if you can, is leave for me in a comment below a small shop, small diamond painting shop, that you think I should check out because they have super awesome diamond paintings. Now, having said that, I would like you to stick to US shops. I'm trying to buy things from companies in the USA because that's where I'm located right now. That's gonna save me on shipping. That's gonna mean my diamond painting dollars go a little bit farther for right now. I would like to find maybe some of those smaller shops. I know 
there's at least one shop on Facebook that doesn't really advertise or have a website anywhere else. I'm sure there's probably shops on Etsy that I've not heard of. And there's so many things Etsy frustrates me because, I mean, if you just put in diamond painting, the amount of things that come up is overwhelming and trying to sort through everything and trying to find a, a good company to buy from. Now I've already bought from Distracted by Diamonds, so I've already bought from them, so I know they're a good store. I'm looking for someplace that I haven't bought from before that you guys think would be good for me to check out. So leave me a comment down below. Again, I know there are tons of you who would like to point me towards UK companies and other companies. It's not that I think those companies aren't good. Just for now, while I'm still in the US, that's kind of where I want to focus. I think once we move, crossing my fingers that I, we still have sort of the same financial situation that we have here, then I can try some of those other companies. We'll see. Anyway, yeah, leave me a comment. Let, let me know what, what kind of gem is out there that I haven't discovered that I should be buying from. I'm only looking to buy even if it's just one kit, but I just, like I said, I've not seen any real, ooh, I've gotta have those kits, which is kind of disappointing from my go-to companies because they're big companies. They should have a lot of things to choose from. I get, maybe it's just that my, my aesthetic, the things that I am drawn towards just are not kind of what they're focusing on right now. I, I told my husband, I feel like, like I have money to spend and I can't find anywhere to spend it, which is like the most first world problem ever, right? I don't want to sound like I'm ungrateful. I'm not. I just would like to find some hidden gems and you guys could help me. So leave me a comment. Let me know. Also, just a couple of random things. So I noticed, I've, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube where people are labeling them first look videos. And I was like, well, what's a first look video? Isn't that just an unboxing? Apparently, at least the, the video that I watched, it was supposed to be a sneak peek, but the kit had gotten delayed for some reason. So they called it a first look rather than a sneak peek. So I get not calling it a sneak peek, but isn't it just, I guess maybe it's a first look because it's not a sneak peek because other people have revealed the sneak peek, but also it's your sneak peek. So I didn't quite understand that. I don't know if that meant it was available to other people for sale or not. You guys, I'm just so out of the loop. Who knows? Anyway, also, I have seen people posting about going to a diamond painting retreat here in the States. And while most of them seem to be happening places way too far for me to get to them, I suddenly thought, oh, I wonder, are there diamond painting retreats in Canada? Because once we get up there, maybe that would be a thing I could do. Has anybody in Canada gone to a diamond painting retreat? Do you have, if you've gone to one, is it in Canada or have you like gone to one in the States? Are there any in Canada? Inquiring minds want to know. I guess I could just do a search, but it seems like one of those things where it could also be, I'm not a big Facebook person and it seems like that's where a lot of that stuff kind of gets advertised. So maybe I just miss it. I don't know. All right, how long have I been rambling on? Oh, for quite a while. All right, I think that's enough for me today. I shared all my goals with you guys. Reminder that DP for Pets is coming up. You guys will be seeing an announcement video for that. That will be during the month of June. So if you haven't already got your kit for that, start planning. I've got some good prizes put together for that, I think. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be posting more information about that. All right, let me zoom out here so you can see what I've done. I haven't done a, whole, a ton. It's going way faster than the J wall, let me just say that. <laughs> but, but I am liking these kind of dark ABs. I'll be interested to see, I think for black, I'm not going to, I don't think I have enough where I can just completely replace the black like I can with some of these other colors. Like for the 939, this is the amount of drills that I got. I think I have enough that I can just fully replace them. For the black, I have so many black drills because it's this container plus another one. 
I don't think I have enough black ABs to fully replace, so I'll probably just kind of randomly put them in. But it's looking good so far. I'm really enjoying it. I mean, it's Diamond Art Club. Their drills are always good. It's around, so it's going pretty fast, but loving it so far. And we'll see if next week I can get things set up so that I can do a, a whip and chat of my J wall. That's it for me today, guys. Thanks so much for sticking around till the end of the video. Before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching.